In the early 20th century, the world stood on the cusp of a medical revolution. The discovery of antibiotics, first with Alexander Fleming's discovery of penicillin in 1928, transformed modern medicine, offering a powerful defense against infections that had long claimed countless lives. By the time World War II erupted, antibiotics became the unsung heroes on the battlefield. They saved millions of soldiers from otherwise fatal wounds and infections. Over the next decades, antibiotics became the bedrock of modern healthcare, curing infections that had once been death sentences. They revolutionized surgery, agriculture, and food production, allowing us to produce more food with fewer losses. Antibiotics were seen as a miracle, a symbol of progress and human ingenuity. But what we once saw as a miracle is now facing a grim reality. Today, antimicrobial resistance, the ability of bacteria, viruses, and fungi to resist the drugs designed to kill them, has become a silent global threat. Decades of overuse and misuse of antibiotics in healthcare and agriculture have driven this crisis, weakening the very weapons we once relied on. Resistant strains are thriving in the most unexpected places, including our food. From farm to fork, antimicrobial resistance is now making its way into our diets, and the consequences are devastating. The food we eat is becoming a vehicle for this growing threat, as resistant bacteria from animals and crops make their way into our kitchens, our bodies, and our lives. This is the story of how a groundbreaking discovery that shaped the last century has now brought us to a critical juncture, where the food we eat could be the silent pathway for a global health crisis. One of the major causes for death in our countries. We are actually in deeper trouble than we might have thought. AMR could unwind 100 years of medical progress. The silent slow motion pandemic. This is just evolution at play, right? This is what we see at the macro level for uh, centuries, the way uh, life evolves against threats. What we know right now is that about 700,000 people die every year because of AMR and its related issues. Uh, this is expected to go up to 10 million people every year by 2050. The bacteria that you're trying to kill with antibiotics uh, find a way to escape those, right? Uh, and so when you are throwing a bunch of antibiotics again and again uh, at the same bacteria, there's more likelihood that AMR will develop. India is going to become an antimicrobial resistance capital. There is an urgency for the parents that the symptoms has to subside immediately and they should start going to the school. So they are scared that their child will miss the school classes and then the examinations also. So most of the parents, they come to my clinic or my practice, you know, when they consult us, they tell me that my child should become all right and uh, he has got exams. And many times they have got some other uh, programs also. They are enrolled, their names in the program list, Independence Day or whatever it is, you know, national festivals or even these uh, religious festivals where the child is taking part and therefore they want their child to be all right immediately. Within one day or two days, how can we make the children all right? It takes time and it has got its natural course. So they say that antibiotic, if you give an antibiotic, if you give a medication which is uh, should be effective and immediately and uh, the child should start dancing next day, which is highly impossible. Um, so there is a common misperception that your body is becoming resistant to antibiotics, but it's not. It's the bacteria in your body or that, that potentially infect your body that become resistant. So the estimates are about 70% of all antibiotic use is used in animals, not humans. And about two thirds of that antibiotic use in animals is unnecessary. So it's not used for treating an infection in animals, it's used for the, the growth promotion effects. So if you're looking at the drivers of resistance being excessive exposure or overuse of antibiotics, 
then probably 50% of that is being caused by the use of antibiotics in farming and agriculture. Antimicrobial resistance anywhere is antimicrobial resistance everywhere. Antimicrobial resistance is happening through several sources with several spaces. For a human being, you can have antibiotic resistance coming in due to uncontrolled use of antibiotics by the people in community. Majority of people know that farming in farming practices there are antibiotic usage happening to ensure that their yield is good. You have a chicken farm. You feed antibiotics to the water, to the feed and all. So what happened? This chicken will eat or drink water in different levels. So different chicken will have different amount of antibiotics in their body, which will again become a playground for bacteria to gain resistance. And all the antibiotics is not used by animals. Majority are again put into water or soil. All this will create a scenario which will help any microbe to gain resistance. If antimicrobial resistance uh, occurs in the environment or in animals, it would in the end inevitably find its way to humans. A lot of us humans, animals and the environment is connected. So in order to prevent AMR in us humans, we need to prevent it in animals and the environment as well. Just like you should not be consuming antimicrobials without a prescription, your animals should not also be given antimicrobials without a prescription. Farmers, they might be uh, affected by how the milk production is getting reduced because the uh, cattle is affected and they might get an antibiotic which was prescribed by the veterinary in the last time. And things such as this will develop antimicrobial resistance in those, in those animals and those resistant bacteria will be present in the environment and in the end they'll inevitably reach us humans. So we need to understand that the health of us and our animals and the environment is connected and in the end it is going to come back and affect us. Every time you throw an antibiotic at a bacteria it will try to get resistance. The problem is just not deaths, it is also loss of productivity because people are falling ill and the recovery will take longer because diseases which were previously cured by antibiotics in say 3 to 5 days are not cured anymore that quickly. The World Bank estimated that by 2050, the world will continue to lose on an annual basis about 3.8% of their GDP because of AMR, uh, which is a big number. So patients themselves, they go and ask these pharmacists where they are not uh, pharmacy or pharmacy people from the counters, they give directly the antibiotics without consulting the doctors, wherein they judiciously try to use the antibiotics. In addition to that, these patients also have this habit of self-medication. So they go on their own and they start the antibiotic. They think that the antibiotic is a, is a wonder drug where it can cure anything and everything. And that is not the scenario as such, because it has to be used carefully and it is a double-edged weapon. Once you start the antibiotic course, you'll have to, it has to be completed. Suppose if it is overused or if it is underused or if it is used without any uh, uh, directions, then definitely they'll go for resistance. This is what we are facing now, especially in India. When I went to Dindigal, there is a market called Oddan Chatram. It's a huge market of vegetables. Most of the vegetables for states like Kerala, Odanjatram is one of the biggest places from where the vegetables goes. We had a study there and I was interested to understand about the farming practices, use of pesticides and all in that place. In that process, we identified that farmers are in a loop which is so vicious. We found that there are so many pesticides, insecticides used, which they know are very harmful and still they are using it. They are committed to make sure that they have a consistent yield and to ensure that yield, they use a lot of pesticides and insecticides many times more than the recommended level. About 73% of the global use of antibiotics 
actually goes into agricultural systems that consist of all of the uh, animal and non-animal food products. What that leads to obviously is antimicrobial resistance. Antibiotics when used in conjunction with vitamins uh, can increase yields of animals. So that's very lucrative for businesses and hence antibiotics get more commonly used, more routinely used in animal husbandry than they would be for simply uh, treating infected animals. Plants account for about 0.2 to 0.4% of uh, agricultural antibiotic use. A majority, however, goes into animals, uh, seafood, poultry, uh, cattle and swine production. Sometimes there is bacterial contamination of food where that bacteria in or on the food can then enter the human. And if that bacteria has picked up a resistance gene from the food, um, then it potentially will infect the human with a, a resistant strain of bacteria. Um, and then the, the other possible mechanism is that if food has been treated with antibiotics, potentially there are residues of those antibiotics still present in the food. And so when the human is eating the food, they're now consuming a low level of antibiotics, which then starts to potentially help the bacteria within their body develop resistance. In a groundbreaking experiment, Harvard scientists revealed just how fast bacteria can evolve to outsmart antibiotics. Using a petri dish about four feet long, they divided the surface into zones with increasing doses of antibiotics, starting with none at the edges and becoming 1,000 times stronger at the center. As bacteria entered the dish, they grew freely in the antibiotic-free zone. But as they reached higher concentrations, most were killed off. However, we start to see a few mutants evolving. Within 10 days, these super-resistant bacteria had pushed their way into the areas with the highest antibiotic levels, proving how quickly they can develop resistance. This experiment isn't just about bacteria. It's a warning. The more we use antibiotics, the faster resistance spreads. And in the fight against infections, evolution is always one step ahead. For any disease, we vaccinate a dead dose of any pathogen with which the body learn how to conquer it. After that, we are resistant or we are able to defeat that once that infection comes to our body. So imagine for bacteria and fungus and everything, you are providing a petri dish with different levels of antimicrobial agents in the soil and the water. These areas there are several kind of mutation which will help them learn and observe and grow and become super bad. So the situation is very alarming and it's happening around the world. Ensure that you dispose of your antibiotics properly. You should not be flushing it down the toilet or you know throwing it in the uh, you know backyard over there or you or just uh, dumping it irresponsibly. Because uh, when you do things like that, uh, the environment is exposed to antibiotics. Antibiotic resistant bacteria or any other organism, microbe, will start developing in the environment. Twenty-five or so families of viruses which are considered to be potentially harmful for human beings. It includes around 17 lakhs or plus species in it, of which around 6 to 8 lakh species are considered harmful. Currently, we know around 219 species. In the last 30 years, we have around 30 plus diseases emerged in our world. We have a lot of unknown viruses, potential viruses, which can cross over and create diseases for us. While the threat of AMR looms large, are there actions we can take today to counter it? Have we already crossed a point of no return? As individuals, can we make practical everyday choices that reduce our reliance on antibiotics and ultimately curb the rise of resistance? So there are some food products which now just label themselves as antibiotic free. Uh, which is, again, we hope that they stick to that label uh, and actually not use antibiotics throughout the range of the products that they make. Um, the other is to buy organic. Technically, organic would mean that you're not using external chemicals, which includes antibiotics. Uh, so those are two ways of ensuring that the food that you consume uh, is antibiotic-free. I think buying local also makes a lot more sense. 
because usually local farmers uh, at least in india marginal farmers are unlikely to be using uh, antibiotic to an extent as industrial farming uh, does if consumers demand antibiotic free produce from farmers farmers will produce it right at this point of time the antibiotic laced uh, food products are also selling quite well uh, there is no incentive for the farmers to move away from it so a lot of this is raising awareness among consumers uh, on choosing the right uh, lifestyle when it comes to uh, antibiotic use or the use of food that is grown using antibiotics the organic type food will generally be less antibiotic usage than food grown on food lots the pressure for farmers to use antibiotics in their production um you know is driven by reducing the cost but if they're able to charge a premium and establish processes where they are able to reduce the unnecessary use of antibiotics and they can charge a premium because a supplier such as a large fast food chain um needs antibiotic free meat then that just helps the whole ecosystem and so that, that that is driven by consumer demand so if consumers are saying look we want to have antibiotic free meat that'll drive the producers to deliver antibiotic free meat and and be able to afford to do it antibiotics once our most powerful tool in the fight against infections are losing their effectiveness this isn't a problem for the distant future it's happening now the only choice we can make to reduce the antibiotic intake is through the food we eat. The key solution lies in understanding the source of the food we consume. Opting for products that are certified antibiotic free, organic, or come from local sustainable sources. Support local farmers who raise animals without relying on routine antibiotics. Simple decisions like reading labels or asking questions about where our food comes from can make a world of difference. These choices not only protect our health but also help preserve the antibiotics that still work. It's up to us to safeguard the future of medicine. The time to act is now before it's too late.